Hi, this is Yvonne Pran, and this is part six of You Can Do It, How to Make the Most Out of Microsoft Publisher. As I said in the previous video, you can really create pretty much whatever you want to using Microsoft Publisher. And I use this illustration of this one design that is often used as an advertisement for InDesign, where they show how you can do all kinds of fancy things, layering uh, text and images and graphics and combining things and all of that. And then over here, I showed you how in less than half an hour's time, I recreated pretty much the same thing using Publisher. So Publisher is a wonderful program. Now, in design, it has its advantages and things like that. But for probably 90% of what most churches will do, Microsoft Publisher is a wonderful program. Also, if you just jumped into this video, in the previous one, in video number five, I tell you how to get Microsoft Publisher at the charity licensing price. So check that out if you need to see that. But the reason that, um, that I like Microsoft Publisher so much, and this is directed perhaps to some of you who are primarily using Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is a wonderful program, but everything's fairly static in it. This is a, a template out of um, uh, Microsoft Word, and it's hard to really manipulate things very much. In contrast, Publisher is a true page layout program. And what that means is you see you can really break apart the different parts of the design and lay them out on a background screen um, just like you could if, if you were laying things out on a drafting table. This flexibility, the ability to move things around and, and things like that, that's what really gives Publisher its flexibility and its power. And you can, you can do so many things with it once you learn the program. Again, in the previous video, I recommend that you get the training video from lynda.com to learn how to use the basics. But once you learn the basics, in this video, I want to give you a few tips and ideas on how you can modify it to make it even more successful. The other thing that is a real strength in Publisher, in addition to it being a true page layout program, are the templates these pre-done designs, and I will have a number of other videos on this site showing you how to use the templates. But this is so useful because you can create templates for people in a ministry where they can update them monthly, and this is, this is just invaluable. Fine-tuning, though, makes them even better. Now, don't ignore the templates. In the next video, I'll show you what happens if you do, and that isn't usually pretty. And you want to maintain a consistent design style throughout a set of publications, and then they'll really look professional. Now, let me go ahead and show you what I mean by some of the things I just said. Modifying the templates to fit your needs. Here's an example where I show you what this means. This one right here was their template the way it appeared in Microsoft Publisher. Now, you can select a lot of different color schemes. And for what I was doing for a men's ministry, I really liked this one a whole lot better. So you see, I substituted the different colors. Now, another thing, this is, this is just a little thing, but it just bugs me. Um, in Microsoft Publisher, almost always the nameplate and, and this is the nameplate. This is not the masthead. The masthead is what tells, is the part of a publication that tells who put it together. But the nameplate in newsletters with Microsoft Publisher is almost always too small. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't look right. It looks silly. And I can, um, I can tell a lot of times when I, I see a church newsletter that's been put out in Publisher, if the name's really little, they, they did it in Microsoft Publisher and it just doesn't look that good. In contrast, you see you want to fill up this whole area. Now, how did I create this Word update? Now, you can use Word Art in Publisher, but it is kind of funky and limited. I have some other videos that show you how to do this um, that are on this site, but Logo Smarts or any of the logo creation programs Believe it or not, these are these are great little programs to create nameplates for newsletters because 
What these programs do, Logo Smarts is, is one that I really like and, and I use, and it's what I use for this, is you can put together a series of letters, you can make a word, and then just by saving it in the logo creation program, that turns it into a graphic. So you can size it any size you want to. These programs only cost maybe, you know, they're $39, $49. But they'll do exactly the same things as some high-end people use uh, that they create in Adobe Illustrator, which is hundreds of dollars and really hard to use. So that's how I created this, uh, just an inexpensive logo program, which I, as I said, I do have some demonstrations of this on this website. And you can create a wonderful nameplate just by modifying the template a little bit. Now, another thing that... Um, Microsoft Publisher does by default that's just the silliest thing is almost all their not almost all all of their brochure templates as they just are are way too narrow the live area I call this the geek effect um, it's just bad design now years ago I mean this just bugged me to death why in the world did they do that and then I was doing some stuff in my little home office one time getting ready to take it to church and I realized that my home inkjet printer, a lot, and a lot of your printers are like this, they kind of slide a little bit. So one side has a lot bigger margin than the other. And I think they did this. Um, I, I call it um, bad design, but also printer uncertainty. I think that they may have designed it this way. So no matter how much your printer slipped or whatever, you'd always have plenty of room on one side. Well, that's goofy. Um, just play around with your design and work on it till it prints out just fine on your printer. But you see how I have stretched the margins. It just will come out looking so much better. This one, once it's printed up, just looks, it just looks silly. So always, um, you know, modify your brochure templates and they will look so much better, so much more professional. Although be sure to, you always leave room for the fold. Nothing looks tackier than having printing run over in the fold. And when you have it just all laid out in front of you, you don't notice that. So always, before you finalize it, no matter how good it looks on the screen, print it out, fold it up to make sure that none of your printing runs into the fold. Okay, to get the most from any design, this goes a little bit beyond design into ministry, but this is so important because it doesn't matter how fancy something is if you haven't included all of the details. Um, this is the back side of a men's business card. You can turn any publication like this, this is just business card size, into a mini brochure with the name of the pastor involved here, the location and a map, starting and ending times, child care, website, phone number, email, all of these sorts of things. If you're wanting to advertise anything, invite people to things, be sure you put all that information in there. That's far more important than any software you use, any design that you use to make sure those connecting details are all there. Now, with that same design that I just showed you, if you maintain a consistent design with Publisher, it can just look really good. Now, see, these are some things I mocked up for a men's ministry. Now, doesn't this look nice? I mean, doesn't it kind of look like you know what you're doing? Um, if you do something like this within a ministry, you set up a color scheme of the templates, you have a consistent logo, you have consistent colors in your artwork, it will really go a long way towards branding that ministry. Now, that's not all there is to a brand. A brand is not only what you look like, but what you do. You'll get known for certain things, but it's a great start. I oftentimes challenge people in my seminars, if you want to see how good you're doing in this area, take all of the publications from your particular ministry or maybe the overall church ones, but let's just focus on a ministry here. Take all of the publications that you've done, say, for the men's ministry for the last six months. Lay them out on the table. Step back and say to yourself, if I didn't know better, would I know that all of these came from the same place? Chances are you'll go, oh, my word. You see, we have to fight the urge to change just because we are bored. Oftentimes people will say to me, and you'll hear me repeat this little statement again and again, that 
readers do not get bored. Readers get confused. The person getting bored is you in the church office because you want to change things and you're tired of it, look at the same way and all that kind of thing. But people, people don't want that. Think about USA Today. It has not changed its basic look since it first came out. And people love it. It's the nation's most popular newspaper. Now, I'm sure the people that do the layout on it are just sick to death of looking at that thing. But they do it the same way because that way people are not distracted by the, the design. They get right into the message. So you just come up with some good designs. And then also, as I've mentioned earlier in this series, this consistency, this creating a, the templates, it's great for teamwork because in the church office, you could create the template, then you could pass this on to the person in the men's ministry who does things. He could create business cards, personalize them for each of the guys in the ministry that wanted to hand them out. You could do updates each month on the postcards where that person could fill in the dates, email it back to you at the church office. You print it up. They could do maybe some key stories on the newsletter, email it back to you. You can edit it, print it up. You see how having this consistency in design, having key people with the same software, you can really get some good communications going on. Here's another example of one a thing that I did with publisher templates that I thought I'd share with you. Uh, my husband and I have done a lot of stuff on the uh, 40 Days of Purpose, 40 Days of Community. And we were working with this little church, and uh, they wanted to do the 40 Days of Community. This is the logo that they made available. Um, it did not impress me, which is neither here nor there. But also, too, it, uh, the, it, it just didn't work for a lot of reasons. If you printed it out in one color, it just kind of all grayed out. And those weren't the colors of the church at all or anything like that. And two, it, it, I don't know, I just didn't think it was very useful. So I found this piece of clip art. Well, actually, this piece of clip art, this ca uh, comes from... Um, a company, and I, I love this company. Uh, this is what I use their clip art all of the time. It's nvtech.com, and it's their task force collection. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Now, this is what it originally looked like, and I liked the hands and holding each other. I thought that'd be really neat for the whole idea of community. But then the church's logo colors are gold and blue. Now, one of the things I love about this program also is that within the program itself, you can change colors of parts of the clip art. You know, you can't do that in a whole lot of programs, um, but you can do that right in, in, the, in the clip art program. So I changed it to this kind of uh, goldish yellow and blue, saved it. And then you can see this Microsoft template set that I did. Um, I just took my little logo and I put it in all of the different pieces. This is a, a postcard. These are actually two business cards. I, I don't really have this, the size too good, but um, a little business cards, postcards. Um, the church, we, we didn't have any money, so we couldn't buy their little keychains for the verses, so I just did them up on a, um, on a, uh, a little, um, little, little card like this, and, and people could use it for a bookmark, and that worked out really well, and everybody loved it. So you see, with Publisher, just coming up with the clip art, and then again, um, I changed the colors in the template to go along with the logo, and it gave it a really unified look and brand, and it was, it was an extremely successful campaign, worked out very, very well for the church. Now that I've shown you how to make the most out of Publisher, we're going to now do a little case study on how to use Microsoft Publisher in creating a church newsletter. Just a few little tips and things like that that will help you.